Hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Happy COVID Friday again. Um, I'm Gay Bruno, host and producer of the show. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're here the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. Follow me on, on, on Twitter and on Instagram, QTE Brat. And please follow the Between the Sheets podcast Facebook page. We have a wonderful guest tonight. Um, it's something, she's been doing this for years. Um, I think in the time of COVID, um, what, she, what we're actually practicing now and what we're doing about a healthy, clean lifestyle, she has been doing this her entire life. Um, she's Canadian, which is a plus because we love those Canadians. They're always very polite. Um, and, um, but without further ado, oh, one lovely thing before I say, you can call in 323-524-2599. We always love to hear your voices. You know, pull a chair, join us in the room. We adore you. But um, thank you, Nadine. Her name is Nadine Artemis from Living Libations. If you guys go to livinglibations.com slash pages between the sheets and use the coupon code sheets, and I'll put it on my Facebook page, they are having a 15% sale of all the products. But if you mention sheets, you will get an extra 15% off, and that is 30% off on the products. Um, I actually have the products. I'm going to run later and get them because I've been running like a crazy person today. But without further ado, I want to just welcome back some of our co-hosts who haven't been with us for a while and then there's always Cara and Mara. So, <laughs> so I just want to welcome Cara. Cara, um, welcome again. I love you. I miss you. I miss all of you being in studio. I um, know. And if anyone has been following Cara's journey on the Taj Mahal um, mosaic, she is almost complete and it's absolutely stunning <laughs> behind her. Yeah, I got to finish it for a wedding in two weeks' time. It's taking place here. Wow. You'll do it. We know you will. people socially distanced. So I'm sitting outside, and I'm sure that uh, Nadine won't like these products. Certainly not this one. Off. There, there's a lot of mosquitoes around. I'd like to talk about that as, as well. Yes, as we will. And then we have, um, let's go with Mara. Hi. Mara Shane, who's always looking like our, our we're, she's like the between the sheets Barbie. Always perfectly quaffed and beautiful as always. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. I miss being in studio as well. So tell us just a quick thing about that you launched a new Instagram page, didn't you? Yes, I uh, started a, a page for my arts. It's called uh, Mara Shane Arts. I have a website called MaraShaneArts.com. Um, so I'm working on that. I mean, right now, I think I have like 75 followers. So <laughs> Okay, well, well, I'll help you. Don't you worry. Well, uh, well, thank you. I mean, everyone has to start somewhere. So absolutely. Look, when I started between the sheets, I was like, so disappointed because there weren't that many followers. And now we have a lot. So it's all about setting the groundwork and just being patient. And Cheryl, and our next is in house psychic medium extraordinaire told me my color's red i'm wearing it <laughs> my boobs look at completely huge today in this in this thing um but cheryl cheryl murphy is back cheryl what have you been up to i've been seeing you all over facebook thank you it's great to be back great to see all of you ladies again i've just been doing so much online online events you know online readings trying to stay connected to people right we got we got to stay in touch with each other you guys and we try and we do and we we are you know isn't it about energy and frequency it's about energy and frequency and it doesn't matter if we're in the same room or not it's just you send that out to others and you will get it back in return am i correct Cheryl? Uh, you're absolutely 100 percent correct <laughs> you've taught me well you've taught me well um and then of course we haven't seen this this beautiful face in a while um delicia and i said it right can you believe me it took me like what a year and a half um to get your name right um but so what have truly what have you been up to um uh, i got the most expensive free yurt that anyone's ever given me so oh. it's been uh, it's been a, an adventure and i'm still trying to get it up i've got a couple of guys coming tomorrow but i had to do some grading and now I'm, the building materials themselves just to build the base twenty three hundred dollars it's crazy wow. expensive but wow. i got the yurt for free Hey, whatever. No. <laughs> All right, what is a yurt, please? What is a yurt? Yeah. Hey, Kurt, pull up. Can you pull up a yurt? So the it's like a giant tent. Is? It's basically what the Inuits used to live in, and they still do, actually. 
Um, but they have a variety of different ones. This one is extra tall, so it stands about 10 feet tall. Like a and it's a it's 24 feet in diameter. So it'll fit a lot of people for my birthday party. Whoever wants to still come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get, us, get us the invitation, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. My son takes a yacht to Burning Man on the, uh, the top of the truck. I just want to show you. I'm doing a Mara. <laughs> doing a Mara. Okay. There. I have a Mara. Uh, hey, Mara. You do do. I've seen you do that. Um, um, just uh, before we get to Nadine, I just want to just give another update. Lily, as you all know, I brought her in my cat to the ER today. She's going to be there a few days. Um, she has, her white blood cell count is really high, so there's obviously an infection, which are causing issues with the kidneys. So. Mm. Um, but she's stable and, you know, she's there and she's got really good care and better care than I could give her. And um, I'm just a little at peace. So for those of you that have written me, called me, emailed me um, with your prayers, your love, your good intentions, um, I appreciate you. Um, I will keep you updated, not on the show, obviously, but on Facebook. Um, but thank you so much. Um, I am completely humbled um, by you following us here on Between the Sheets and, um, and in gratitude for all of you. So thank you so much. Um, and my big purchase for the week or a couple of weeks ago is I bought an e-bike. Um, so that's kind of fun at Thrive by Giant Live. So buy that e-bike. You really aren't biking. You don't even break up a sweat. Um, but without further ado, because I know Nadine's calling from Canada and it's late. I want to get her on. Um, it's livinglibations.com. And these are the notes I took when I was talking to Angela. So I'm just, it's just, and this, you know, it's a brick and more, um, you're being, you're sold, you have brick and mortar in Venice and then Nordstrom's correct your product line. There's about over 700 products, if I'm not mistaken. All your products have no chemicals. You're one of the first people to create clean beauty brands. Um, celebrities like Renee Zellweger and Mandy Moore swear by your products. It's all for all skin types. Um, what's really funny is I, I was fortunate that she sent me a sampling of it and I was told it was face products, teeth products, and in there is, you know, lube, um, love butter, and yoni juice. So um, I was quite um, taken aback, but and I have not used it yet, but I plan on it. The other stuff I have used, and I must attest, um, it is amazing. I wouldn't come on here if I didn't believe in it or I didn't try it, but I absolutely did. And it is well worth, you know, all your hard work and testing and all that what you do in, the, in your mother's kitchen back when you were a kid. Um, being inspired by Lisa Bonet has paid off. Um, I love the tooth, the clay toothpaste. It's just amazing. Um, you live in Canada. Um, you lost everything, what, five years ago in a fire? You seven years, it. yeah. Seven years ago. Yeah. Rebuilt it. Her, she's a woman. She lives in the, like the woods in Canada. Um, so one of the first women-led companies. She has family hours for employees. Uh, she's got an organic cafe, meditation decks. Her product line is a lifestyle, um, renegade beauty, um, recipes. Oh, that's another thing. She wrote two books. One of them is like recipes on all the products that she has. Another one is on teeth hygiene or tooth hygiene. Is that correct? Maybe. Yeah. It's, one's called holistic dental care and, and she the other one's explain, renegade beauty. And we'll explain why holistic dental care is important, um, for the entire body. Um, it's sort of, her, when I think about her product line, it's a, sort of a balance of the body, mind, soul, and spirit. It's, it's, it's integrated. And, um, oh God, your mother was an architect. Uh, it is just so much. You're a hippie chick, an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, you've got a kid's line. You've got a men's line. Um, Jesus, let's just get to talking about her. Um, her oh, she's an Aquarius, January 29th. Um, and, um, and there we go. So, Let's start with, and you, and she's a big follower as I am of Krishnamurti and Rumi. So, um, so that's, that's pretty much the plug. And now we get to the <laughs> bottom line deal. So seriously, I mean, Lisa, how old were you when you inspired to do this? What inspired you truly to do this? Yeah. Well, I just wanted a couple of things. My mom was an interior award-winning interior designer. And I think we actually have more like about 300 products, but we have different sizes. So I just feel like I had to say that. <laughs> Um, well, I really was engaged with nature as a kid and like always raiding my mother's bathroom and mixing things together, whether it be the skull and crossbones under the sink or the joy perfume that was really quite exquisite. Woo! And that just led to further inclinations. Um, you know, I thought there was green beauty going on when I was a teen with like the body shop and stuff. 
Um, but, and I also got an opportunity to, to do a science fair project where I just, you get to pick your own subject and I decided to do it on perfume. And through that experience, I was able to really actually connect all those little bottles that I had and understand their history a bit further. And that the and perfumes were actually used to be made from plants and real extractions. And the book that I was reading at the time suggested to go to a health food store and find essential oils, because that's what they were working with to make perfumes back in like ancient Egypt and stuff. So uh, that was my first foray into kind of you know, essential oils and making something. And I didn't quite understand the difference between natural and synthetics at that time, even though that was sort of my first entry into that. And then the Lisa Bonet inspiration part comes, so I get to university, you know, and I'm skipping it a bit because it's a bit boring in some parts. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I got into my women's studies classes that I was that, that thrilled, but I was like skipping, you know, I don't know. Russian history or something that day and uh, I saw Lisa Bonet on the Phil Donahue show so it was a while ago <laughs> and um, she was just talking about um, you know eating and food and that food was connected to health and the environment and that was really new back then and so just kind of putting those threads together as I was on my own and at university and and in those moments, you know, you're making your own food and living more independently. So it was really all in that moment it was all in just like a month seeing that show with Lisa. From that moment, I got a book, the book that she was talking about. And from that moment forward, I just, you know, didn't eat processed food again, I ate organic food. And I really started to understand like things about health, like there was a, there just happened to be a little, um, health food store on my way home from university and it was in inside a little house it was like retrofitted it was called grains and beans and things and I bought like every book and I really started to understand and read about you know ways to solve headaches or stomach aches and all those things that are sort of common ailments mm -hmm. how to just solve it differently or what was making it occur in the first place and that was a real like opened up so much for me because just being a kid and maybe having a stomach ache or something or going to the doctors and like just feeling the futility of it all and you're just like looking at these adults and you're like you don't know you don't know like you don't know and you really have no suggestion so having that real experience that that doesn't really work nothing major happened but i'm just like yeah you don't know how to solve that um and then just be going into this world and then at the same time so i started making things because i i started understanding like what was in the food and then it was like oh what's in my cream what's in that body shop stuff like oh it's the same petroleum promise land just dressed up with like lavender labels or it says like fuzzy peach bath oil and it's never been impeached it's never seen a peach you know <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah like if you go to um what's the one bath and body works or you know the yeah. ones all the smelly fragrances everywhere and they can smell quite um strong and chemically yeah I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's again, those not, that's not real. And so it's, I was right. starting to make my own food on my, like, uh, like totally went in sourdough, oat milk. Like I was back in, I was like, oh, rice milk, like, like learning to make nut milks. Like nobody was doing this. And, um, and then I was making my own stuff, perfumes, lip balms. I was like using film canisters to put lip balms in. I was recycling <laughs> bottles. And then it was like making products for my friends that were waitressing. And it was really popular, effective, simple. And it gained traction, again, just with sort of friends and family. But I was also needing to get a whole range of ingredients that I just couldn't find. And so I had to, you know, I wrote different consulates and found distillers and then brought in samples that were like otherworldly, um, even if they were just something that I'd normally had smelled, like something simple like bergamot or tea tree or grapefruit. There was just other distillations. So it was like wine. And I was like, oh, there's a whole finer thing going on. And then also to find ones that I was reading about, but couldn't find or read about in ancient books, like ancient recipes or like what the Egyptians were using. So I had to really sort of scour the earth to find all these bits and pieces together. So I started importing organic essential oils while I was at university because um, I had to. And then right. um, six months after graduating, I uh, opened up Can North America's first full concept aromatherapy store. And that was super fun. I would make custom blends, perfumes for people with the scent bar, 
and we had just a lot of fun clients that would come in. That's where I, I met Alanis, for example. Alanis Morissette. Yeah. We had tickets, a whole bunch of us had tickets to her concert. Such a bummer. Oh. So, but she, she rescheduled next year, but we love her. Yes, she's awesome. And that was so fun because she was just like, she'd heard about the store and then her friend was like, cause she's Canadian. So she has some Canadian friends and she's like, oh my yeah. God, we know her. So we met her after a concert, like, you know, some concert she did. And it was funny because I was always, I would mop the store floor, you know, after the day. And I would, I was mopping to her music every day back then. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like full jagged little pill um, moment. That was and then she, one album. yeah. And then she came and it was so fun. She's like a kid in the candy store and, and just, she so got like, she gets the smells and yeah, she still has. Have you ever read the that. book Jitterbug Perfume? Oh yeah, <laughs> your story reminds me very much of it. Well, you know when our house burned down, my friend sitting sent here me... just smiling inside. <laughs> uh, our house burned down. She sent me this quote from Jitterbug Perfume that was just phenomenal. It was just was like you know something about them looking back and you know all their treasures were gone. And was, I don't know, I can't remember now. It was really profound. So, your story reminds me a lot of that yeah. story. Mm, I mean, yeah. I know we're talking about your perfumes and your yeah. de delicious libations, but I <laughs> know, and it goes off the subject a little bit, but to okay. lose everything. Oh, yeah. How I know that that's a terrible thing, but what was the good things that came out of that? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the good thing is just seeing like how you got to turn it around. You got to find the positive. Like, I mean, that's how I feel anyway. You got to keep moving your way out of it and finding the better feeling thoughts to get through it. Um, yeah, I mean, we lost, I mean, again, we had little cabins, so I had the pajamas on my back that day and we had, you know what I mean? So there was that, but really the heart and soul was the main house where our mm -hmm. business was attached. So it was everything. everything. And my mother had died six months earlier oh my. and all her treasures and they oh. were treasures. Got, like mm -hmm. my great grandfather was an artist. He went to Egypt. So I had his paintings. My grandmother was an artist. Oh. So I had like some antiques and paintings from the 18th century. It was crazy. It was, and then we lost everything, like, and we make everything. So it was like mm -hmm. everything, you know, and then <laughs> liters of sandalwood and frankincense right. just like offered up to the heavens. So it was, yeah, it was a lot um, to go through. It was a really- But it can be very freeing, isn't that right? Because I think it was, yeah. I you might remember this, um, Gayanne, but wasn't it Alison Moyer, the singer, didn't she give everything away and start yes, afresh? Yes, yeah. she did. I, you know, I didn't get that feeling of the freedom of it. I <laughs> definitely walked through it. I felt like it was initiation. Yeah, you I actually started through. feeling really good when I started replenishing. You know what I mean? When I was like, oh, now I have a passport, clothing Choosing. that, I, shoes, <laughs> you know, that I could feel like a walk out. And just getting all our business material back. So we didn't have one business material and even you know our, our whole hard drive like everything like it's it was like a cleansing or a purification you literally walk through fire you know yeah metaphorically speaking i, I mean seriously i mean i like sometimes so do any of you think this i mean my life is good and i'm in gratitude but wouldn't it be fun sometimes just to sort of like change your name move somewhere else and just start over without baggage, the trauma, the bullshit, the exes, all that shit. I mean, like that to me would be so freeing. You know, I did that when I was 23. I went to Switzerland and I did that. But I think at 23, it was way more difficult than if I was to do it now. Honestly, at 49, I think it would be a completely different experience. Besides the fact that there was no cell phones back there. So it was much right. easier to <laughs> But it would be so cool. It would just wow. be so cool. I mean, because it is, it's kind of like a purging, a cleansing, you know, because I think in life, I know in life, not that I think, I know that, you know, everything that we pass in life is part of the journey. You know what I mean? It is important that we pass it. I think some of it is all predestined for us to move forward on our journey. And that's great. But sometimes it's sort of like, I want to go, okay, I've done my journey here. I want to start a new journey with a whole bunch of different people. And maybe my name will be Alexis. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Be Natasha. Princess can sway low banana hammock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I mean, it would be great. You can always reinvent yourself. You know, that's what life's all about is reinventing yourself. But it still is a fantasy to, you know, that is fun to think about to change your name, 
Sometimes I wish I had a different face and I had a different no, look. Your face is fine. I'm so. I'm like, don't change your face, girl. Don't change your face. I'm looking in the mirror, you know, and they are their own love, face. Are we smarter? You failed tonight on self love. I'm just telling you. <laughs> tonight, epic fail, okay? Um, <laughs> but so, like, so when you started the products, Nadine, um, you know, like I said, when I was talking to Angela, you know, it really is integrative. So why don't you tell us sort of like, cause I know you are a spiritual being like, let's talk about the toothpaste and let's talk about your book about the, um, the holistic dental care. Why is dental care so important? It really is important. I mean, it's kind of this thing we may be really bored of brushing our teeth, but it's so important. Um, functional medicine really, you know, a lot of doctors, it's hard, you know, I guess not all doctors, but there's a, big body of belief in medicine that 80% of all disease is really the root cause is in the mouth. And what most of us have going on is really kind of work that we have to repair because of the blind spots in dentistry for the past like 60 years that we've kind of, you know, gone down some weird roads with. And so decades later that can catch up with us. So whether it's just the, you know, the surface stuff of the saliva um, the gums, you know, a lot of people have sensitive teeth, bleeding gums. These are all, you know, we can kind of like ignore it, but those are really good early warning signs before things are getting worse. So, you know, we don't, there's also a whole oral microbiome. Maybe a lot of people are getting familiar now with the gut microbiome. Well, there's a whole one in your mouth. <laughs> and uh, most of the modern medicines and practices that are in dent dental care and dentistry are actually mutating the mouse microbes and kind of mutating the mouse immune system. Ooh. For example, just mouthwash, you know, just the classic stuff at the drugstore, the type of alcohol in there creates over 36,000 cases of oral cancer a year. That's so crazy. And you know oh. what? One thing. I was going to say, I, I use the only organic toothpaste that I know of that feels more organic is Tom's, you know, but I'm sure that that's not even the best. Yeah, that, that kind I of- I use a liquid organic botanical, uh, like oil-based toothpaste. And I now <laughs> use Nadine's. There you go. <laughs> um, the ones with Tom's is, uh, it's it's got sodium oral sulfate in it, which that's you don't I really- want even in shampoo um so yeah it's interesting it's pretty abrasive toothpaste that if you really look at the label it's like yeah it's even kind of like in between stuff, what's that if it says if i get the toms it's the fluoride free yeah it'll still have other issues like if we popped up a label right now i would literally dis dissect it and... wow okay <laughs> maybe you know can what? I, go... I just want to say yes i make toothpaste and everything but just forget all that you can just stop using whatever you got at home right now and just pull out some baking soda and if you use baking soda for the rest of your life you would be better off than now what about own. whitening the teeth wow well whitening actually comes from within so the enamel is actually transparent like a window and it's the health of the pulp chamber underneath that's reflected and so we want to be delivering a lot of nutrients to our teeth, like fat soluble vitamins and getting those minerals in there. And that will actually be reflected in whiteness. So if there's a, a real def deficiency in food, like you'll see people that may have gray or glassy teeth, they're just like not getting nutrients up into the tooth. The tooth is like with its roots, it's like a tree. So it draws up and into itself the nutrients that then coalesce inside the uh, pulp chamber and those nutrients then turn into a, a dentineal lymph system. We actually have a lymph system in every tooth. And then that gets pushed out to the surface of the enamel through the odontoblast. And this microscopic wow. fluid, it's kind of like microscopic oh. sweat, <laughs> it coalesces with the saliva. And then it's supposed to protect the mouth and prevent cavities. Um, because we're actually, cavities are prevented in a different way than we think. So when we draw the nutrients up into the tooth, that's the system we want. When <clears throat> we don't get enough nutrients or there's a lot of stress or toxins or chemicals, that system actually begins to then, instead of drawing nutrients up, it becomes stagnant or worse than stagnant, it starts to pull in like a straw from the mouth. So that, that system reverses. Then we're pulling in the viruses, bacteria into the tooth. Oh. So 
it's like, you know, it's not just that thing of like, oh, we got too much sugar on our teeth. It's like a deep system that's connected to the endocrine, to the hypothalamus, to the blood system. So we got to just know the mouth's connected to the body. Wow. Mingled spat. Wow. Sorry. It's okay. The only thing I know about like teeth and hygiene care is from my pets. Because, <laughs> I, I know, I, seriously, yeah. because like, a, a, like if the pets get kidney disease and I know this is all degenerative, but that's why it's really important why you have to do dental cleanings to your pets because mm -hmm. that bacteria builds up and does affect at some point the organs in the body. So of course it makes sense. Yeah. If you don't do per, like good dental hygiene. We're screwing shit up inside. Yeah, we're like swallowing plaque and the and biofilms, and then that goes back to the microbiome of the of the, of the mouth. And so, yeah, the, the the ingredients that we're using and the dental procedures we're doing are like adding to the bacteria or mutating or kind of creating an environment where more um, bad bacteria can exist. Wow. And the I've been using a wonderful product called Thieves mouthwash. Um, yeah, I there's still many... some ingredients in there. There's, it's neat because it has uh, the essential oils, which we, if as long as it's an authentic essential oil, we know that they've got ingredients. I like to think of them as botanical biotics. So those essential oils can actually bust through biofilms and they can get to things that antibiotics can't. Well, and my what we now know. He's fascinated. He could, oh, he good. Could, after three months, he said, wow, it's gone. You're fine. It's all good. But I'm having implants. Now that's. Yeah, I'm now, sure so for implants, you've got to got to make sure you do not get titanium implants. You do not want that metal implanted in your head. Okay. So the only alternative to that right now is zirconium. And that is showing to not take a toll on the immune system. Writing that down, baby. <laughs> yeah. So if your dentist does not have that, then you must find another that okay. does. Because that is like, do not get that put in. So one of the first things I did when I uh, started to heal my Crohn's disease is I changed my toothpaste yeah. and I changed it to this toothpaste called Glacial Blue, which is all essential oils. But I want to go back to the microbiome for a second, yeah. because um, I think it's super important for people to understand that it's not just about like what the food that you put in your mouth, because if your dental <clears throat> uh, is not working properly if your oral system is not working properly and you don't have the right microbiome in your mouth then you're not going to be able to break down the food properly and it's not going to be able to digest properly in your in your system correct me if i'm wrong yeah it's part of the whole system so of course there's the enzymes and the digestive acids and you know all that kind of stuff and then there's the whole microbiome in the gut that's going to be working in coordination with your mouth so yeah it's a whole system and a lot of what we need to do with our mouths is kind of like get out of the way, sort of stop, you know, using the things that are harming it and then kind of just let that microbiome reseed itself. And, you know, think about eating foods that are prebiotic and probiotic and reseeding the body. I like to think of, you know, our, our, our bodies are like this microbial bank account and we need to keep it diverse and active and, you know, just keep that because it's really taking care of us and our body. And there's a microbiome in the, on the skin. There's a whole microbiome system there. And also for women, the yoni, the vaginal microbiome is a very important Okay. Area. Okay. <laughs> now I'm moving into sex, everybody. Uh, <laughs> about time. Uh, so you've got, so what are the three sex products that you have? Because you probably have more, but I've got the love butter. Yep. And what we have like we have three butter? love butters, which kind of give you different flavors and different tingles. Tell and then we've got love butter is. Um, it well, it's like an alternative lube. It's just all natural. You know, we've got beautiful one with like jasmine and cacao butter, and it's really like it's so beautiful when you can use the which really are the sex glands of the plants, <laughs> and turn those into beautiful lubricants for our body. It kind of all makes sense. So we have like three love butters. Um, we've got three yoni serums. One is like, you know, to use daily. Then there's one that you can use also to prepare for birth um, or, you know, in later years or just like the, it's really good to just put a little bit of serum on each day to just to protect the yoni. And then there's the one for after the petal soother it's called, or you can use it if you've got, um, you know, a yeast infection itchy, there's something called vulvodynia, which is like an itch that just doesn't go away. And it's helpful for all of that the petal soother, super strong. And then we've got a beautiful um, 
oh yeah we've got the venus love lube and then we have got the shiva lingam serum which is our what beautiful is i didn't get a sample of that one that's for the man's <laughs> oh i would never need a sample of that one. <laughs> yeah. so for the, the shiva... second one does that uh does that address the dryness with menopause yes so that can that can be doing for that and then there's other herbs that you can use but yeah you can put it all in that area and you know and, and just daily even if if it's not for a lubricant for sex it's just like just you know putting it on daily will just help that area on it on a daily one of the most surprising shocking things that a kaiser doc ever said to me yeah. was you're dry down there. Oh, you need to no. use coconut oil every day, oh, wow. but make sure it's organic. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I was very impressed. So I know we have the face regimen. So yeah. what's the yoni regimen? Well, it's really just so simple. Just apply, like, again, just apply it to your yoni. And just because, like, all day, we're, we're not, you know, creatures of the wild anymore. We're not, like, squatting on sand and getting all that kind of, you know, and it's good. We would brush against nature and we would get information and, pro, and, and microbes that were beneficial. So now we're all in our polyester underwear not all of us obviously you know sweating know. rebelling <laughs> rebelling at the polyester and like um you know or shaving and then we've got toilet paper with chemicals that just that little dab a couple times a day is just those little dust motes from those chemicals can come off and everything so it's just like giving your yoni just some love some lube oh. happy <laughs> I, I told you you'd like her cara <laughs> i never knew what a yoni was but Cara and I belong to a sort of a, it's, it's a group of, of, of women um, and it's the goddess group where it's nice. goddess, goddess camps and we're sitting there and you know and uh, and someone said Yoni and I'm like what the fuck is that and I had to explain it to me but it was not hard because I'm not dumb but it was just I never heard that word before but it's um but I just I love I love I love the names of your products I, I it, it's just I just think it's amazing, but you have a men's product line. You got a kid's product line too. I mean, you pretty much have like sort of covered every single like niche. Yeah. It's kind of like, cause through the years, I mean, the people that love libations, they're just, once you're in, you're kind of in. And if I don't cover every part of the body, you know, I just, they, people, our clients want us to. So even when I'm like really I don't think we need a cuticle oil because you could just use the face oil, but people are like, please, a cuticle oil. I mean, so we even have like a cuticle oil, you know? So how do you come up with the names of the products? I mean, is there like, is, it must be only you or do you have like a team of people? It's just me. Are, I love the names. For the names. I mean, we've got an amazing team, but the names, I, I really, even as a kid, I like naming things. And this is such a silly little story, but there was the show Square Pegs with Sarah yes. Jessica Parker yes. and Jamie Gertz. Yep. And Sarah just a partner was like, when I grow so Valley Girl voice, if I could do one, but like when I grow up, I want to name lipsticks like red, very red, and very, very red. <laughs> it was such a silly moment, but I was like, yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> I just knew it when I was a kid. So love candy. naming. Remember the nail polish hard candy when that came out in the K? Yeah. And those crazy names like trailer trash or yes. you know, like I don't know that like gold rush. They had such weird names. Yeah, it was funny. I love naming our perfumes. Like we have ones called like Being Free is Lots of Fun, Roses Shining Everywhere, Radiant Earth. Aww. You know, it goes on and on. <laughs> oh, obviously. I mean, you know, everything is plant. I mean, for you, it's like oh, everything is like down to the earth, down yeah. to Mother Nature. Yeah. Just you know taking what we have, not in our backyards, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And sort of just utilizing that without chemicals. Um, you know, that a lot of people, what I'm finding even for me now, I mean, especially during COVID, I've always been very conscious, but since COVID, COVID I've lost 25 pounds. I'm, you know, I would say vegetarian light um, because I eat some fish. Um, you know, I'm using, I'm, I'm reading labels more. I'm becoming much more aware and conscious of stuff that's shit in, in our products and across the board on anything, anything from, like you said, like shampoos and all the crap that's in shampoo. And so, I mean, like, how do you, okay, all the stuff and all the plants and stuff that you experiment with, how do you know like what's best for what in the kind the combination of it yeah 
you know, it's it's sort of hard to spell out because there's a deep knowledge and there is so it's so fast. Like it's so to create a product it's like mostly happens in my mind and the last two percent is that me in physical form blending those things and uh I don't know I can formulate it in my mind and generally it comes out that way so it's such a fast process it's really hard and there's colors that happen I feel like I'm really even just blending color but again it's all mental and then the knowledge of the plants comes from like obviously just learning like reading and all that but also just working with the plant the so plant you're intuitive in essence yeah. you're intuitive cheryl this is your category <laughs> you know <laughs> i could totally feel that when you were talking nadine i was totally feeling that that you're 99 percent you know the spiritual inventor right yeah. so 99 percent of it is manifested you know not in form right and then it's only when you like wake open your eyes and you bring it into physical form that's when that one percent steps in and you know puts the label on it or the bottle on it or actually makes it yeah but i have a question for you mm -hmm. because i feel like with your company i mean you could really go so many different avenues because there's so many things that we need. We need help with this stuff, right? We need help with living a better lifestyle, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. the cleansers in our home, you know, whether it's um, like you said, the makeup or the body lotion. Uh, I just feel like your your company is still growing, right? I mean, you're still expanding and, and just re still inventing products, right? You're still- Oh yeah, like I could pull out 20 right now, but I, I actually have to really, uh, pause myself because it would be too fast for the world <laughs> i'm like oh i can coast now for six months because i just you know made five products or whatever in that in that category um but it's amazing like we're so we have just i love all the people that love what we make but on another level i mean we're just like a drop in the ocean um you know and yet to be discovered it's like there's so much room there but yeah we we really do go into so many realms and you know, education, we really love to do that. Our, our customer care team is so great. We do free consults for dental or, or beauty, like whatever question you got, we will help or lead you on your way. And Renegade Beauty, which was my latest book is really this beauty Bible. And there are, you know, there's, it's like four, over 400 pages. There's 500 science, um, citations and science papers mixed in with spirit and there's chapters on breast health, like very serious, you know, a whole chapter on vaginal health and birthing and skin and how to make perfumes. There's a whole chapter with recipes. And then there's like a whole A to Z of solutions, whether it's like acne, thyroid, weight gain. And I just wanted to put it all in the book, you know, so that people could really um, dive in so that we can learn. So I guess I was saying that because of what you're saying, like there's so many different categories to learn. Yeah. And so I feel like Renegade Beauty really does set us off and, and it's very holistic. So you really start to see like, oh yeah, it's like the whole thing. And it's 2020, mm -hmm. there is enough choice that's without synthetics and without petroleum because there's no cell in our body that's really craving to be plastered in petroleum. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you have like a starter kit, you know, like a kind of a starter kit for somebody who wants to try all the new products, but without the additives. Yeah, we do. We have starter kits in different categories because, you know, so we have the dental starter kit and the essential oil starter kit. You have a Christmas box. <laughs> don't have a Christmas box. <laughs> hey, everybody, you're watching the sheets. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. We have wonderful, um, author and just she's amazing i mean she is like a hippie but so smart and all this nature and i just freaking awesome nadine artemis um please call us if you have any questions 323-524-2599 we're ready to hear your answers your questions any ideas um even some names of products i'm sure nadine would be open to uh, but, <laughs> but what's your thing um I mean, I, I'm looking at my notes because as as Angela and I were talking. Um, also, by the way, go to livinglibations.com. Use the code, coupon code SHE, 30% off of her product. She's got a 15% sale. And because you're watching Between the Sheets, you get an extra 15% off. I, that is awesome. So please do that. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at my notes just briefly as we're talking. And the word cosmos is written three times. Explain your your interest in the cosmos. 
Well, I like to think of it um, in terms of beauty as cosmoetic. So it's this like application of the elements to feel our beauty or to revive our beauty rather than the application of really, even if it's something I made, like it's not, that's not what beauty isn't something that's applied to you. It's something we gotta, you know, bring out as hallmark and cheesy as that sounds, it is from the inside out. Now to help us in that process, then we want to, as the primary beauty attendance in the universe, engage with the elements before we put, you know, before we think of the mascara. So what are the, you know, that's water, air, sun, and the earth. Um, so water, you want to have pure water. You want to be drinking that. You don't want to be bathing in chlorine. Baking? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. For drinking water and stuff yeah. what is the best because we're all drinking a lot more water now because we now yeah. understand it's beneficial. So yeah. what kind of water should we be drinking? Spring water is the very best. And there are websites like um, findaspring.com. You can see where is there a natural spring near you. And then you guys are in LA. You're fine. There's spring water sure. delivery. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> What about, like um, the kind you get at the that's bottled at Whole Foods, but it's called a sun shot. Oh yeah. So if you're gonna get, you know, get a, just don't get it in plastic because that's a, like the the issue. We all know issues with plastic, but right. when it comes to water and plastic, the bigger companies they make the water bottle at the factory, so it's this hot plastic that then gets injected with water. Even oh. if there's a BPA less than whatever seven. You know, the B, yeah, the and BPA free. We, we all know, like, we're gonna find out in five years, like, the BPS <laughs> alternative is the same bullshit. Right? So, so what, how, you get water in from a glass container, then, yeah. So, if you are buying spring water, like, yeah. instead of getting it or getting delivered, then do do glass for sure. And then, for people, like, if you can't do even a oh, filter system, or when I'm traveling and I'm not about to shower, shower, I travel with a shower filter, but if I don't have time to put it on or whatever, I just shower with some spring water and I keep a bottle of spring water in the bathroom for brushing my teeth and washing my face and I'll just pour that on the cloth and stuff so kind of camping in the hotel room with my bottle of spring water sure, because it is a lifestyle I mean what you're saying yeah. is a lifestyle do you have like makeup too May like lipstick? we do, we have some like I, I hope to make the mascara in the next year or two and some eyeliner and that's kind of about it because generally with foundation and stuff we're really looking at again you can wear it but we want to bring out your best skin so that, mm -hmm. and we get so many emails every day of like, oh my God, I don't feel like I have to wear makeup now to leave the house or so it's kind of liberating. But what we do do is we do have a beautiful palette of um, shimmers and uh, like tints that you can wear as lips or, or cheeks or, or uh, eye stuff or highlighters. So we've got some shimmery ones and then a, there's a beautiful root that I use that makes the most beautiful red, this root. And Ooh. so we have we have this blush that I call it, it's a blush that blushes you because we also use like cinnamon and cayenne in it. So it brings the blood to your cheeks as well. So you just get that rosy glow. Are you wearing it now? I am, yeah. <laughs> I did get a bit of sun today too. So I don't know what what you're seeing, but it's all in there, yeah. But I've been getting a lot of sun lately because I've been yeah. going out. Yeah. And it's like, I don't have, I mean, besides mascara I, and lipstick, I don't really have anything else on my face right now yeah um you know and i'm old you don't so need that's it good i'm loving i've really i do have a whole chapter on sun and skin it's like because i because it is good to get sun exposure on your skin um obviously not getting burned stuff so i take a whole chapter to really go into that because we really need to deprogram a bit from the last 50 years um but it's it is funny i've been really appreciating from quarantine everybody's way more tanned. And I think it's so great because s s there are studies that show specifically for COVID that keeping your vitamin D levels sufficient wow. will help prevent it. Or if you do get it, that the symptoms are a lot better. So I'm seeing all, like, I just feel like everybody, like even like Jim, the Jimmy Fallon's and Stephen yeah. Colbert's of the world, they are rocking their tans. It's <laughs> so good. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you had time off, you know, or not time off, but time that wasn't spent yeah. commuting. And so they could enjoy the sun a bit. <laughs> So tell us, I mean, we have COVID, obviously. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I've got two questions. So we'll go to COVID for a minute. But going back to the book, Renegade Beauty, which is like a Bible, I, I just find it really cool. Like, because most people want to sort of not give the recipes. It's like, you know, they want to keep it for priority. Right. But it's really cool because everything's organic. Like, there's nothing, no chemicals. So Truly, yeah. people can make their own stuff. And I, yeah, I it's simple. 
Yeah, because we're, yeah, there isn't that much complexity. And if you're using the right ingredients, it can be super fun and super quick. And my recipes were simple. You don't even have to pull out a blender. <laughs> Or a vibrator at this point. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe if you do the yoni, you get the vibrator. And then when you got the lube, you got to try that stuff. Um, but about COVID, like, um, yeah. so there's a lot, obviously, there's not a lot of answers about it. There's, you know, there's yeah. someone who, like, I had a scare a week ago. Um, there was someone that I was in contact with that got tested for COVID. Um, now, they were positive. Um, and the interesting part is, you know, we always do this, I mean, you know, safe distance, that's distancing, the washing of the hands, the mask. But, you know, for the first time, I have to say, when I got that call mm -hmm. that she tested positive, for two seconds, I was scared shitless. Mm -hmm. um, because I live with my mom and she's mm -hmm. 88 and she's on dialysis and she's oh. got COPD, I take care of her. Mm -hmm. I totally freaked out. So right from my nail appointment, um, I literally, went and found a place that does, you know, COVID testing, no appointment. Four hours later, I was still a little freaked out, but not like panic, but you know, now I had the mask on in the house and stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, and 24 hours later, obviously, uh, not obviously, but I didn't feel like intuitively, I didn't think I had it. I know, cause I'm intuitive too. And it's like, if I get a feeling, but I knew I didn't have it, I was very confident. And I did the, um, the swabby thing in the nose. Mm -hmm. And oh, I yeah. did the blood test and, mm. and I never had it and I don't have it. So it was negative. And everybody else in, in the whole like little group was negative as well. That's okay. Good. She, I said to my friend, you got to go back and get another COVID test because mm -hmm. I don't believe this. And mm. she, it was negative. Oh, really? for goodness sake. So now she's got to, she's going to wait a few more days and do it again because now you need two negatives. Oh, Okay. Yeah, these tests are not accurate. No. The thing well, is, most testing, you're, you, know, you know, there's no way to tell if you're positive, negative, whether you're, if you have 21 days that you could get this thing. So it's like, when do you test yourself? How do you know? It's so up in the air. And that's why but the it's thing just so is, important nonsense. to wear But the thing is, <laughs> it's all conflicting. It's 14 days, 21 days. Do it in the middle. <laughs> that's the problem. I mean, that's the scary part. There is no real information about this thing. So Nadine, knowing nature, knowing plants, like what I would say, what are your top recommendations to keep this all sort of the immune system up and stuff like that? You know, what should we be doing? Yeah. And these are, this is the way I've been thinking for a long time, you know, even pre COVID, because I feel like there's always something out there, right? Um, so number one, we've talked about, which is sun. Literally, we have thousands of vitamin D receptors all over our body. And we need more than the vitamin D supplement because that's a fat soluble, soluble vitamin. When we interact with the sun on our skin, it's a water-based soluble vitamin D. It creates a cholesterol sulfate that's good for the immune system. When we lie out in the sun, we create antimicrobial peptides, which create catholicidins, which creates one specifically called LL37, which specifically shows to be preventative or helpful against RNA, reverse RNA viruses. So mm -hmm. that's like, you know, it, it's it, when you have enough sun, you're also able to deal with things like Epstein-Barr, it goes on and on. There's over 3,000 studies that show, you know, that having sufficient vitamin D reduces our chance of various cancers, various diseases. If we're sufficient in vitamin D, our, our risk of breast cancer goes in half. So it's very, very important to have that interaction with the sun. Then uh, another top, you know, are minerals important? That one that's really important is iodine, which is also antiviral, antibacterial. We, it's essential mineral that we're supposed to have in our bodies, but generally 70% of the world is deficient. That's what makes, you know, also it's good for the thyroid. It's good for breast health. It prevents fibrocystic breasts. It prevents the swelling of the body. It's, it's um, prevents dampness in the belly. It helps to balance the three estrogens and make the best estrogen um, sort of top place. It helps to chelate heavy metals out of the body. So like a loom and take mercury. As, can you take that as a supplement? Like that you Yeah, it is a supplement. You just take, yeah, it's like a couple drops or there's a capsule for, form. Okay. And you can just get like a Lugol's or a nascent vi uh, 
iodine, like Amazon. Okay, it, I have a question easy. for you. Yeah. So I have a lot of women, I mean, mm-hmm. in my age group, and I'm 56, mm-hmm. develop thyroid disease. Yeah. Um, oh, it's rampant right now. I have Hashimoto's, yeah. so I'm on Synthroid. Right. Yeah, and- so that... There is debate. So Hashimoto's people, there's a, a, a huge chain of thought that's like, don't do iodine. Then there's yeah. people that do. So that's a real independent journey there. You'll have to sort of see. Mm-hmm. Um, some people theorize that it's so lacking iodine that that's really the time that you do need it if there is Hashimoto's. But I also think there's, because it's so prevalent right now. I mean, for all women of really from twenties to the seventies, the thyroid it's getting, it's also cause it's sort of a canary in the coal mine for us. It's, it's so, if we don't, it's got these receptors in it. And if we're not filling them with the right things, the other ones come in. So if we don't have sufficient iodine, then other, um, elements from the from the halide group bromide chloride fluoride will come into the space where the iodine is supposed to be it's kind of like having a parking lot and the iodine is supposed to be in those spots but if the cars iodine cars aren't there then these other ones are going to come in and and radiation is such a huge issue for the, the thyroid and we've got radiation coming all over the place including you know just medical checkups let alone you know the environment so yeah the thyroid thing's huge it could also be uh, out of whack because of other underlying things like Epstein Barr or Lyme or the adrenals. Um, it's also thought of, it's rare, but it's good to know. I think this is helpful for women to know. It's sort of thought of as the third thi- the third ovary. Oh. oh, yeah. So you can see there's like if women have PCOS or something, which is a polycyst, uh, poly ovarian. So I haven't got it right right now. But anyway, and there's a real connection. It's usually a thyroid thing. So yeah, you could or fibroids or there's a real connection. Me too. With that. I have that. I have that too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we can just think of that little kind of like an access point there. So we Hashimoto girls then, should we be taking iodine or are you not you're not sure? That's a that's a hard one. I feel like if I had it, I would explore iodine, but you really want to read both sides and figure out also. Uh, thyroid diagnosis is off. You may not like you, you got to really, the testing is so, and you got to kind of do this realm, but most doctors do that. So you may even really want to look into thyroid testing, like, and, and, and the whole, there's a lot of, um, no, I wouldn't say controversy, but there's a lot really where it's like the mainstream definitely has it off. There's about, you know, 12 tests you should take, not these six, because you have to look at the antibodies and stuff. So there's a lot, if you have been diagnosed with a thyroid thing, I would look into that. In my book, I, you can email us and I can give you sort of a book list to read. Okay. And then again, with the thyroid, the mouth, you know, we've got to wow. got to know what's going on there. Wow. wow. It sounds so, expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it can't have you that. heard, have you heard that? I know you'd mentioned baking soda earlier. And I know baking soda alkalines the body. I have a friend who's a nurse who told me that he had read something about if you take a quarter teaspoon of baking soda in the morning, it could help with the COVID neutralizing it somehow. I don't know about that, but it's definitely great. We actually produce bicarbonate in our bodies. And of course, as we age, it gets less and less and less. So it's really good for the kidneys. It's good for alkalinizing. It's great for swishing around in your mouth and alkalizing that saliva. So when you do take it in the morning on an empty stomach, it's, it is good. It is beneficial for sure. Wow. All right. So I'm going to bring up a controversial topic. Okay. Um, what you feeling about Botox? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Earth Mama's not into it, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, again, if you got to do it, you got to get it, do it. And there's so many, pre- so much pressure on women, especially in the performing arts or just whatever, even homemakers. So I don't judge it at all, but it's definitely something that it's not a, just not working because I just would be afraid of the toxicity, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It seems like it, it goes polar opposite of everything that you've just been talking about. Yeah, yeah. so I'm not in, but I'm not judging. <laughs> no, 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 I, I get it. I mean, I get it. I get it right here. You I mean, I yeah. It. So, I mean, because because I hate these freaking lines and I, I just don't know what to do about them. And it bothers me. It just totally bothers me. But that's yeah. just my thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so diet, how important is diet? So important. I, and also... I've really come, to, I've, I've done many different things over the years. I've always been organic and non-processed since that, since I was 18, but so 
you really, there's like a realm of about 10 variations of diets, but really other than that, it's like, we've got to eat whole foods. If we're eating meat, it has to be like, you got to know it's got to be grass fed. It can't, we can't eat anything factory farm. That's horrific. And then there's definitely a few foods that I don't think anybody should be eating, which is like modern wheat, soy, um, you know, if you uh, gluten, I, I just, most people thrive without it. Yeah. And I really feel like people got to find out for them, like what's working eggs could work for somebody. And again, we're talking like free range egg working yeah. for somebody, not working for somebody. Um, cashews can be a real aggravator, but they seem so beautiful and make so many great desserts out of them. But you really have to figure that out. Is it like yams for you or potatoes? And, and that's important that we, we get stronger like in discerning what we need rather than what we think, you know, we're following whatever advice. You really got to tune into our bodies to get that right. So how do right. you discipline? I mean, how, like, let's say us, I mean, you know, I think probably Delisha more than anybody on, on, on here, and I don't even know about our viewers, but I mean, we all try and do the best we can and, yeah. you know, we stumble and fall, but like, how do you start? Like, how do you learn to discipline yourself? I don't. I'm an Aquarius. I have no discipline. <laughs> I'm an Aquarius too. I have none. Yeah. <laughs> I also have you, any of you taken That's the cop out? <laughs> <laughs> have you taken the four tendencies study? Anybody here? Uh -uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's, um, oh my gosh. What's her name? She wrote happiness at home. Gretchen Rubin. Possibly. Maybe. So she wrote a book called the four tendencies. You could just, it's, it's a quick test online. It's mm -hmm. upholders can't remember a questioners there's a disciplinarian one but i don't think that's the name of it Ob obligators obligators upholders questioners and rebels i am a rebel so that means in her mm -hmm. terms i don't take direction from inside myself or outside myself so <laughs> <laughs> so for me and i've understood this from an early age is i need to be inspired to do something and I'm not motivated, I'm inspired. So it's that real inner conversation that brings me and directs me to where I wanna go. And so for me, and like food, cause again, there's no discipline in what I'm eating. I, I love what I'm eating and whatever I'm deciding in that moment. Um, because if, I'm, if I, I feel the truth of something for me, like I don't wanna eat gluten cause it just, oh, I saw, oh, I just, I didn't think I had a gluten issue. Then I stopped, I'm like, oh my God, such micro little inflammations went away. Cause I really thought I was fine. I'm like, oh, I'm thriving without it. So once that moment hits and I feel the benefit, I don't need discipline, you know? And for me, eating's the whole thing. It's the visual, the smelling, the taste. And how do I feel two hours after I eat? How do I feel the next day? And to me, if I don't feel good, I don't need, discipline to not eat that exactly i wish yeah. i was like that <laughs> <laughs> well i do think there's a chemical thing so let's say you know if you have been eating more sugar or something you may so you may feel the truth that you'd be better off without it but there is also a chemical reaction that could take three days to change mm -hmm. wow. speaking of sugar how do you feel about coconut sugar and stevia and agave and some of the alternative sugars yeah i really don't you know i don't even i i don't even eat that much fruit sometimes i mean i eat blueberries now and stuff but i'm not high in sugar on any level and really once you get rid of that you're so free because you're not being like led by an invisible sugar leash it's pretty yeah. like even on a subtle level like even other years to most people i was not eating a lot of sugar but even when i just reduced sort of the sugar family and like a little bit less carbs, holy balance. It's, it's really quite phenomenal. So I feel like they're all good, but you also want to know, be able to have life and also enjoy bitter and sour. So stevia is good. Um, you know, monk fruit is good. If you got to get hundred percent pure agave seems to just really be a corn syrup racket, coconut sugar. Again, that's good. It's clean for sure. I a kid's birthday cake, but it's not a daily solution to sweetness you, you I, I, don't that's a good alternative to totally like and you know make a cake with it and have this for you know fun moments like that um I it's a good alternative eating, to refined white sugar for sure absolutely yeah i thought that eating fruit 
is okay because it's not. Oh, it is. Like, don't, don't, I mean, I can get hardcore. No, it is. But then sometimes okay. um, it can be very sweet, like a mango versus a blueberry, yeah. for example. Um, and then if you really get into like, it's really good to take a moment and do, it's kind of called a, an elimination diet. And you can just go, hey, three days without gluten. Is this working? Three days without dairy. And just sort of see what you need. And there is lectin. So there's some fruits that also have a lot more sugar and then lectins. And that's a whole other thing. It's kind of like the king category to a gluten. Mm -hmm. um, and um, someone just went on the site and said, what about pure honey? I, I, I use honey if I need to, but again, I, I'm pretty low on, but we use honey in our chocolate, for example. So I, I love the honey. I love the work of the bees. Uh, I use it on my skin. Uh, I love honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm guessing you do. <laughs> so, so, um, so besides the whole, you know, how to take care of the inside, how to take care of the outside. Um, Zen, you, you meditate, right? Yeah. And so like, how do you meditate? Cause we've had questions and talks about yeah. what is meditation, how people meditate. It's not, it doesn't have to necessarily be like the same thing for everyone. So no. how do you meditate? <laughs> well, I've done all different kinds and I actually even came across TM meditation at 18 when I was doing all that organic stuff. Um, but that's like, again, it's somebody else's system. So there's so many ways to meditate, but here's the thing is like, you don't even really have to, you don't have to try too much, but get into your breathing, tune into some sound or something like that you can, like a fan or an air conditioner or, or like a meditation music or whatever. And then, and then the point, I guess that sometimes that people struggle with the point or they think they've sit, sat there and it's maybe this unproductive 15 minutes. I feel like the point is to be awake and not, um, and receiving. Because often in our day, we're just this babbling brook of thoughts and then, oh, we have an idea and then we ha might have a counter idea like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, but can I do that? And the whole thing. You need to stop, have moments in the day where you stop that. Even if your meditation, you're, there's only like one minute in there where you could just be in that awareness that's different than the babbling brook. Then that's a really good minute. That minute will bring to you you, you know, stuff later in the day, later in the week. So it is important to do that. In the beginning of COVID, when things were a little more intense, I was just like, you know, especially running a business and people and, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to take care of. And I just like went into meditating like about six times a day. So I would kind of do some action and then pause. And it wasn't always a full meditation. So I've kind of got this new one now where it's just sort of like a feel good snack. So I'll just like close my eyes and think of things that I can feel good about and sort of get it, that inner feeling going, like feeling Please good. Loose lube or what? Yeah, loose <laughs> lube, put on the oils, frankincense, you know? <laughs> I actually walk and- Do you need to use the bergamot, please? So it tastes like Earl Grey tea? It, it, that's what mm. actually flavors Earl, Earl Grey tea. So you could add a drop of bergamot to honey and put it in your tea. Nice. How about in your yoni? <laughs> about that <laughs> yes you can but you want to dilute it first okay so where is your yoni first and you could have you could have earl gray yoni <laughs> oh my God, that's, you know, the best thing ever any girl that like comes like that's with me and she's got like her yoni is like earl gray i'm so in because there's no <laughs> sugar there's no, yeah, no milk sugar. it's just straight out of the box um <laughs> so you could put a drop you know on your pubic area Oh, I hate that word. I know. I couldn't think of. I couldn't think of the yeah. the yoni version for the hair. What's that word? The what amount of Venus. The, there you go. Yes. Yes. yes, baby. Yes. <laughs> Mara, are you okay with this conversation? I am so okay with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm used to us being like all over the place on the show. So. I know. Well, you know what? I think. I think you know. Our shows usually go like when we're in the studio it's ping pong and yeah. I, I am a true believer in energy and stuff because we feed off of each other and yes. you know you could, so being on zoom the show takes a little bit it's still a good show but it takes a little bit difference it's different because we're not bouncing off of each other and we're actually not oh really interrupting each other that much yeah. <laughs> talking to you. I'm sorry. Like, oh, should we talk now should we talk as opposed to we all, we're all, all over each other um 
So, okay, Rumi. Yeah. My favorite. I don't know. I'm sure everybody likes Rumi. Yes. Make room for Rumi. <laughs> What's your favorite quote? Oh, my God. Where do you start? Um, one that you're just coming to right now is like out there beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There's a field. I'll meet you there. What There's do you think one. about Ram Das? I, I, you know what? I haven't d d dived into his work too much. I, yeah, I think he seems pretty good. I read, I read the book about the, the acid stuff going on at Harvard. What was that about the, the, the Harvard Psychedelic Club or the Yale Psychedelic Yeah, that was fun. I read that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my favorite one of him is we're all walking each other home. I, I just, oh, I, that's I, nice. I love that. Oh, yeah, oh, here's a roomy run one. Oh. Whoever brought you here will have to take you home. I love that. Wow. Love, I that. love that. And you like Kirsch the Murdy too, right? Oh, uh, Ron and I, my, my partner, we just, we like to pretend he's our grandfather. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Oh. I took a year off. So there was a year I retired. I had this store that I opened right after university. And then I ran that for seven years. And I was like, I just need like a year to see. So I really took it off and I really read a lot of Krishnamurti that year. I saved up and I bought the, the whole Krishnamurti work CD from England. It was like 400 pounds. <laughs> now it's all free online. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I just, um, he's like when, when I would read his work, I just was like, oh, because, you know, you'll read and you'll take like 90% of what somebody's saying. And just, he was like 100%. And I love he just goes into thought and like the thoughts before the thoughts and yeah, he's good. No, he's great. Now, yeah. I mean, now there are other people like, like, do you, have you heard of Dr. Joe, Joseph Dispenza or Joe Dispenza? Oh, yeah. I have, and I haven't um, heard too much, but I liked what I heard. I think I heard about 20 minutes. He reminded me a lot of the work of Abraham Hicks. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he's like really mathematical about it. It's like he's giving you the math equations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I used to take Krishnamurti and sort of put what he was putting into sort of like an algebraic equation. So I feel like Joe's really got that. And I know, I feel like that's going to really work for so many brains. I agree. Get that message. I agree. I mean, I think like, I, I mean, don't you feel, and I don't know if it's just evolution or whatever, or, or what's happening with the world, but like so many people now are really delving into like, like like you do uh, like you know it's it's like spirituality like intertwines with healthy living with intertwines in nature it's sort of like the basics of what we what we've always had sort of to heal ourselves and healing ourselves comes yes. from within. Mm -hmm. i mean so i mean you know i mean this COVID thing i mean you know even though cara says it's all a bunch of hogwash or she has better words for it with an english accent mm -hmm. Um, not quite, but you know, not close yeah, enough. I have my, um, I have my, uh, my opinions. Her opinions, yes, we love Clara. But the thing is, is um, it is like sort of a rebirth, mm -hmm. you know, a rebirth, even of the earth and nature mm -hmm. of it regenerating of animals that not that are extinct, but animals, you know, that are finding that are just living in their own habitat, and and, and there's no like smog and all that crap. I mean, that's why I just love what your philosophy is and what you do, because it's sort of stuff that's been here for us. You know, it's not like the secret recipe. It's not something hidden. It's not, it doesn't have to be patented. It just, it just exists. Now, where do you get your essential oils from? How do you, what do you, where do you get all your pure products from to sort of mesh together for your line? Yeah, then that's such an important part because it's the palette that makes everything. And that's, it's the same places that when I was that 18 year old writing to different countries, finding those distillers, most of those people that I started working with in my 20s, I'm still working with. So we really, you know, we need the whole planet. I think there's about 40 countries that we order uh, over 300 raw materials from. And it's a very, you know, it's such an important part of like our relationships to the growers and the distillers and the quality of work that they're making and how we can support that or develop new raw materials. It's, it's such a special part. Wow. Anyone yeah. else any questions? I feel like I'm like, so like monopolizing maybe time. I have a question. Um, yeah. I was talking to Delisha for a while before the show and I was telling her that the doctor told me I have asthma because I've been, mm. coughing, you know, coughing nonstop. And I get this like 
I get this cough like once every other year that just won't go away. Mm -hmm. And he put me on, he, I'm on all these steroids right now that are making me sick mm -hmm. and I'm going to stop them right away. Like three different inhalers, another mm -hmm. mixer, like all that stuff. And I was talking to my sister and she's like, why don't you maybe try to heal yourself from within? Because it could be psychosymptomatic. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm giving that a chance. I'm giving that a try, but I'm wondering if there anything that you recommend for people that either have bad allergies or, mm -hmm. um, or, or like coughs or something, you know? Yeah. There's a really good, again, you know, not a doctor, we're not going to replace your medicine, but um, we have these things called salt pipes. So it's this pipe and it's, there's salt in it and you inhale. So you can either put it in your mouth and then you're mm -hmm. putting your mouth and then you're inhaling and then exhaling through the nose, or you can even do one nostril breathing, which is really cool. And then you put essential, you put essential oils in there with the salt. The salt in its own is very helpful and healing to the lungs. You add the essential oils in and now, because all essential oils, even though there's these fun aromatherapy things, if they're real essential oils, they are all to varying degrees, antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. Mm. So there are essential oils that show to take care of like 98% of all bacteria in a petri dish or tea tree seems to be effective against H1N1. Mm -hmm. There are, they are beautiful and delightful and hardcore medicine by the drop, rich in monoterpenes, which are so good for our immune system. So that's the other thing. It's not only pure and natural, but you, by using it as your beauty care, you're boosting your immune system. You're not only not adding the toxicity and the toll to the liver, you're benefiting your body. Like, so it's not just, you know, neutral. It's like, taking you in the right direction um you know that body oil could also be helping your lungs and all that so we have a, a blend even called called longevity and you use that in salt pipe and people again this is just antidotal but they're able to get rid of their inhalers and it sounds like they have more hardcore asthma than yourself so you can do that there's also nebulizers you can do for inhaling you can well, be I'm on one right now but i hate the, the medicine there it's making me terrible yeah. And then again, putting a lot of essential oils on your chest, like frankincense, and then unrelated to my work, but uh, a wonderful tool of, a sen of functional medicine that's come into, into this, this part of it has come more strong in the past few years. And it's the work is using peptides, which are short chain amino acids. So for basically anybody to start out, if you find yourself some thymus and alpha one, that really seems to turn around like deep uh, chronic autoimmune issues, allergies. It is, to, I'm so glad I knew about peptides and thymus and alpha one before COVID. Where um, do you get these? Well, you can find a functional med, there's an international peptide society, uh, peptidesociety.org. Um, there's can labs, which sends to the States. Um, you can Google to like, just, I mean, not Google, Google, YouTube, thymus and alpha one, see a couple of doctors talk about it. It's really exciting. And you give yourself an injection. That's how you have to take it, a subcutaneous injection. Um, but it doesn't hurt all. It's smaller, like an insulin needle. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I've never used any, and I've done it all for, <laughs> for a few decades. And nothing is so amazing to work with peptides, but especially thymus and alpha one for uh, autoimmune things mm -hmm. or just i mean i mean you know I mean, what yeah. do you feel about this is sort of like you know usually people don't take care of their bodies and then they get a disease or an illness yes. so you're playing catch up what, yeah. what this whole this whole lifestyle is is to prevent even the disease from happening right. exactly and for some reason that's just you know actually i had a, a beautiful reading once with a Ayurvedic astrologer. Mm. And she was just like, she didn't know me. And she was just tuning in. She's like, I just want to know if I've got it right. The first thing in her mind, your dharma is to heal beauty through disease, right? And I was like, wow, that's well said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I just feel that like, even through the beautiful stuff we make and gumdrops and rose oils and all that, but really underneath it all, it's, it's potent medicine for us to really take care of ourselves. Nadine. Do you make any products for teeth pulling? Yes, for oil pulling. Yeah. Yeah, we've got swishing serums in there with like vitamin D and CoQ10 and oregano. Yep, yeah. two swishing serums. Make any without oregano? Uh, yep, there's the mint and myrrh swishing serum. I don't understand what teeth pulling means. 
I mean, I think she meant oil pulling. Oil so, pulling. Um, which is when you, and I have an article on the website and there's information in the book, but you just, it's an Ayurvedic practice for taking care of the oral, oral environment. And you just take a teaspoon of coconut oil or sesame oil or olive oil, and you can add things to it like probiotics or a drop of peppermint. And then you swish it in your mouth for 15, 20 minutes every wow. day. I mean, obviously you spit it out, get fresh stuff. And it, after a month, you really will see a difference in your gums, the whiteness of your teeth. It draws toxins out. It's a really good thing to do. It's a great quarantine activity. <laughs> it is. Cheryl, you had something to say? I do. Thanks, Nadine. So just, you know, the current environment with everyone being nervous or anxious, you know, is there one or two products that you could recommend, uh, you know, that people could buy on your site? You mentioned the, the salt pipe, which sounded kind of relaxing. It is. And uh, it's a great thing for, you know, take that whole range, meditation, allergies, asthma, calming, because it's a great way to really also connect with the oils. So for anxiety or something, you could just, bergamot has studied to show it's good for anxiety. So you could just whiff, take a whiff out of the bottle, but when you've got that salt inhaler, so you would put a drop inside the salt inhaler that you really like, you feel like you're really engaging with the oil on a different level and you can get more into a meditative breathing thing. And then we've roll-ons like a bliss roll-on. It's like really oh, good nice. for that as well. So there's a lot of options. Yeah, thanks. Those are great products. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the inhalation of, of oils? Because I've had a, a massage therapist who have screamed at me for, you know, wanting to ingest oils. So yeah, well, talk about the can... safety of that. Yeah. So again, we have to be working with pure, authentic essential oils. And there are many that are not because, you know, that's that's the kind of world we live in, right? Where there's the fakes and the nature identicals. And, you know, there can be, uh, so knowing if it's, you've got a real oil, you know the supplier, you know the Latin name, you know it's organic. Then there are a set of oils that are grass, meaning generally recognized as safe to use in culinary application. And essential oils, they, they've been made for all these years, like 60, 70 years, not because of aromatherapy, but because they're produced for the food and flavor industry. Aromatherapy hasn't been big enough for the oil production. So it's in your liqueurs, the menthols in your cigarettes, there's, you know, in your orange juice, like it's, that's really how they're being used or they're taking the real raw material and then fractionating it, folding it and then sending it off to the perfume world. So they are safe. Um, and then the ones that you're going to, but again, what I guess what people need to know too, is it's like by the drop. So we're very used to in this culture, like big and slurpees and gulpies, but the essential oils is the drop and a drop's going to go far. And then generally you need to put it in something to take it. So it's, there's a few oils you could put a drop in your water, like peppermint or frankincense or lemon, but they're essential oils. So they're not really mixing with that water. Um, so then you want to use a fat or honey to take it into the body. So you could put a drop of bergamot in honey or olive oil and then take it for your medicine. Because, yeah, there are times when you want to get it deeper in the body to help with the throat or the stomach. But also we're a culture that feels like we have to eat everything to get it into our bodies, put it down this channel. But transdermally, essential oils are doing wonders and then they don't have to pass through the digestive system and they slip into the skin and do their work. And then through inhalation, even if you can't smell that essential oil molecule is going to go up into your, um, you know, your <clears throat> olfactory system into the hypothalamus, it's going to activate things, it's going to have a physiological effect on the body, and it's going to travel through the body, these little molecules do their work, and then they, they leave the body. So there's not a toxic buildup either. I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Colloidal silver. Mm hmm there has been kind of that controversy about that and not, I mean, what is it? And, and like, what, like, what is it? Well, it, it is from, it's like made from silver and just like copper has antibacterial properties, so does silver. So it is seen and it does seem to be effective depending on who you talk to as a um, like antibacterial kind of liquid for the, so for the immune system. So you could like swish with it or, you know, it's, they've got nose sprays. It's good to uh, protect the nasal microbiome when we're flying and that kind of stuff too. But I'll usually just take our balm. We have an immunolim balm 
put a little up there, put a little in the ears before I fly, put them out. We've been making masks at Living Libations for four years because <laughs> when I travel, I mean, I don't want to inhale. Like when I go, because I live in this bubble, we live on 200 acres, it's forested, it's spring waters, it's like pristine. I'm moving so, there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I go into the matrix, I'm like, you know, I want to, you know, I love to wear gloves if I'm going to the airport, but um, I definitely wear my mask. And the, the, the thing, even at the beginning of COVID was like, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Well, it's not the, the special one, you know, because the viruses can get through and sure, all of that. But the whole reason why we made masks is so that you can be in your own bubble and you've got, it's really an excuse to put the oils on. Mm-hmm. So there's this, so we use vintage, uh, we use vintage bed sheets. Then we have organic oh, wow. fabric in the inside. And then you put your oils on and then you're just in your own bubble. And then you're inhaling those essential oils, antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial. So you're inhaling that. You're also having fun because you can add some flowers. So it's like neroleum frankincense. You're in the plane. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. I'm good. <laughs> now you're talking my language because I yeah. I only sleep in vintage or thrift store bed sheets. Yeah, I made this out of a blanket. I make all my coats out of blankets so that when I'm on the plane, I just feel like I'm cozy. <laughs> oh, delicious! I gotta I say, Nadine, you have the most beautiful, expressive hands. Oh, thank and you. It's <laughs> like your hands look like they should make beautiful things. Oh. They do make good things. Cara, I have a question for you, Cara. So you'll wear a mask for essential oils and to smell good, but you won't wear a mask to protect other people around you and yourself? Oh, that's such a twisted way of putting it, sweetheart. I'm just Don't start me. Of course, you will wear a mask around other people. Yes, because okay, they cool. respect it. And, and it's the law right now. But I don't like wearing a mask. I don't like to be shut up. I don't like to be told what to do. And I stay home. <laughs> me too sister thank you yeah my life is I, I'm like when you know the memes that went around there was like hmm quarantine life is like my normal life that's how you know exactly. that's that I would literally I, I other years I'd be like once we got home from traveling the winter I'd be like okay can I not leave my land for six months and then that would be like a little goal for me and I, I don't because I also our headquarters is a 15 minute walk through the woods oh, so wow. I wow. don't I don't. You get bored. It sounds awful. You poor darling. I don't. I've got a lake and and woods. Well, and I've got and I've got people. Like I mean, I've got I got a building over there of thirty people. Okay. (laughs) And you know, I do do a lot of uh, like this being on a Zoom call stuff. I feel like I've been doing for for years, doing podcasts and stuff. And our business is so international that I'm communicating with people all over the world, sort of every day. Did you make your jacket? Well, I, yeah, it's a it's a vintage blanket, and that I made into a jacket. I have like oh, a. Can you get closer to the camera? Yeah. I'd really like to see it. Here oh. it is. Ooh, Look. and I love your little <laughs> sleeve. That's there. That's a little sweater underneath. Nice cashmere sweater. Talented. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Very nice. You are, you are such an Aquarius. I don't. I don't sew. I got. I have a seamstress. Um, but we, you know, for 21 years, she's been sewing my visions. But I'll, I'll usually just get so vintage things, all secondhand. This is a secondhand cashmere sweater that we reworked, wow. and this is a blanket that we reworked. So, yeah, it's usually. I think you have a clothing line next, right? I, know. I have that in my head. I'm just like time with oils. You know what I mean? We just walk around and just yeah. absorbed into our bodies, and we just are. 24 seven nature bound. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're, we're, believe it or not, we're almost at the end of the show. Um, but okay. Magic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> now, they're organic and stuff. And yeah. do they have any medicinal purposes? I think, you know, it's, I'm not in the, I'm not uh, exploring the current I'm like a mother and with a family now and stuff. So I don't, I'm not into the current studies on the micro dosing of the psychosyllabin, but <laughs> you know, the, my, the mushroom world is fascinating. The mycelium network, you know, with all the fungus, it's so important to the planet. It's a whole mic. It's the microbiome of our planet. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I've, taken I've, mushrooms. I've never done them. I have so I've never done them. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and I've taken mushrooms both recreationally and as medicine. And let me tell you, it was a very, very, very different experience. We call it recreational and recreational. 
Medicine, <laughs> medicine not versus it, not advocating it. Very I'm different experience. Just a mushroom curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, we have come, believe it or not, um, it's an hour and a half. We've come to the end of our show. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, Nadine Artemis, livinglibations.com. I mean, this was a wealth. I mean, seriously, I mean, I know I don't know everything. I know a little about something. And there was a friend of mine um, a year ago that had set me on a path, sort of, you know, she, she came into my life to be part of this journey to sort of expand all this information because it was her lifestyle and stuff. So, you know, and, and then just to hear it that you've integrated it for so many years and, and now we have no choice. Well, we should have a choice, but we really should have a choice to do this and live clean, you know, let, you know, put everything in our body that's organic and natural and clean. Um, just, I just commend you for being one of the pioneers in doing such. I just wish you were American and not Canadian because it's always the damn Canadian. We're close, we're close. We have a store in Venice, we're close to you. <laughs> so um, livinglibations.com, um, go on my website, um, go on the Facebook page. Uh, they have a 15% off of off sale. And if you mentioned the, the, I was gonna say the Cuban code, the coupon code sheets, um, you sheets. will get another 15 additional percent off, so that's 30%. Um, I've been using her sample products and now I'm obviously gonna go online and buy more of the right proper size. But I just wanna say thank you for doing what you're doing. You truly, you truly embody sort of in a way natural, organic perfection of human. <laughs> um, I, I truly believe this. You are sort of like, like, I want to be you. I mean, in a way of, uh, you know, and it's discipline. I'm a Capricorn. You know, oh, we are I got it. And you yet are. I have a problem with discipline. So, I mean, and I was like, so, but you know, it's like, you know, doing a, a health care, a face care routine or whatever. I'll like be fine for three days and go, oh, this shit's too much. I'm not. Oh, I'm much. not even into the routines. We got one bottle, take care of your face for the washing and the cleansing, everything, the best skin ever. You don't need routines. We can make it simple. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. It. So there, livinglibations.com. Nadine, thank you so much. Um, your books are right, Renegade Beauty. Yep. Renegade Beauty and Holistic Dental Care. And where can they find these uh, besides your website? Yeah, and like Amazon and all those places that books are. Well, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Guys, thank you. I just want to say thank you again for another amazing, informative um, show. Uh, Cara, I love you and I adore you. Where can people find you? Uh, MaraShaneArt.com and MaraShaneArt on Instagram. Mara's our resident artist as well. Um, she's uh, she's another Aquarius and very talented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the 2nd of February. Are you close to me? I am. I'm on the 29th of january yeah nice i share it with oprah oh wow oh, oh of course you do uh, <laughs> i wouldn't think <laughs> otherwise delicia thank you for joining us um we've missed you i know you've been unavailable and things have been weird we're only on twice a month which still sucks um but because i still would want to do it every week sponsors come and call me um but uh so where can they what have you been up to where can they find you what are you doing babe well, thank you for having me. Um, you can find me at uh, www.whatthehealth.net. Nice. Uh, and Cheryl Murphy. Yeah. Yes. Where can, I mean, where you're everywhere and I'm so, thank you. I'm, you know what, you know, I've gone to you for readings and we, you're, you're also a friend as well. Um, I am just so proud from where I've known you a year ago to where you are now. I mean, like, it's like you blossomed Aww. in COVID. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Well, it's definitely given me a opportunity to connect with more people internationally and uh, more people who are opening up, so many empathic people opening up right now. So everyone is just super emotional and sensitive and there are great things ahead of us, believe me, as we've seen tonight with Nadine. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and if you guys are interested, you can reach me uh, through my website, mediumcheryl.com. And Trump is going to be out, right? Please, people, vote fucking blue. Seriously, vote blue. If you And vote. Don't just sit at your ass and don't do shit and complain. Vote blue. And then we got a Cara. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I've got to do? I have to finish this uh, 
Taj Mahal. Oh, I got to oh, meet amazing. before the uh, the wedding. Um, I'm going to go online tonight, though, Nadine, and order some wonderful products, and then I'm going to make myself a grilled cheese sandwich. How does, does that <laughs> <It's> perfect. <laughs> Nadine, um, you're also on Living Libations is on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook as well, besides the, the, the regular website. Yeah, and the Instagram is where I am a little bit more and you can see our beautiful land and the lake. I'm so like I'm excitedly here. jealous and envious but in a positive, <laughs> wonderful way. <laughs> and we're coming up to visit you. you yeah. <laughs> We'll just borrow her yurt and bring it the hell up to fuck yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We're on the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. Please like our Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast. Also, I'm on Twitter, but don't bother. I hate Twitter. <laughs> um, Instagram is mm -hmm. e Brett. Um, thank you for, again, you know my seven word mantra. I do it on my live Facebook chats. Um, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting us. Um, please support Nadine. Um, you know, it's a woman. It's a woman-owned business. Um, it's it's organic. It's the way we should be living. Mind, body, soul, spirit. It's integrative. And it's being put back to center, being one in the nature and earth. So, um, you know, I think we all need to get back to basics. And if Nadine can jumpstart you with some of her products, and then you can buy your Bible and God luck making the shit yourself. Um, but, <laughs> but I just want to say thank you. Um, and as always, you know, ladies, I sign, I love you all. I appreciate all of you. Um, Nadine, um, I can now, I, I'm proud to now call you a friend and a mentor. So thank you. Thank and you. Um, everyone um, signing off. And you know how I like to sign off everybody. Namaste. 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 Bye. Thank you.